Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this episode of Bearcat Chats, and we're continuing our focus on mental health. Pleasure to be joined by Dr. Mark Rice. He is the clinical director for the University Counseling Center, Nicole Holmes, who is a coordinator for HPPS, and Colleen Roselle, who is the case management coordinator for the care team. To all of you, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having us. And Dr. Rice, uh, or Mark, we'll start with you. Uh, you know, I think the biggest thing for students is we want to sort of distinguish what each of you do. So uh, starting with you, Mark, if you can talk about what uh, UCC does. Sure, Jacob. First, call me Mark is fine. And <laughs> today, uh, thanks for thanks for having us and to give us a chance to talk a little bit about our services. Um, the Counseling Center provides individual counseling for students, and that's what a lot of students think of us uh, when, when they kind of think of counseling. But we also do some other things that are important to highlight. We offer group counseling. We have urgent uh, crisis counseling for students. Um, we also do some outreach and education, although Health Prevention and Promotion does that too. Nicole's going to talk more about that. And we provide some referrals for students for a, a lot of different mental health resources. And then lastly, we do some consultations. So if somebody's worried about someone else, then we help them kind of think through what to do. Although the Dean of Students, the care team does some of that as well. So that's kind of a, a overview of our services. Um, so Health Promotion and Prevention is an office that coordinates a number of different um, peer programs as well as, as death programs, um, promoting health and all sorts of different health so my role um, is coordinator of MHOPE, which stands for Mental Health Peer Educator, Peer Out, Mental Health Outreach Peer Educators. Um, and what we do is all sorts of different programs, tabling, events on campus where we're promoting mental health and helping students um, learn about how they can access resources on campus. So the care team is a case management office. We provide support to all students across campus. Um, we provide consultation, advocacy, referrals, and educational services. Um, we really try to empower students and provide um, support um, and attend to their well-being for more like a wraparound holistic approach. Let's talk about uh, what are the biggest things that students are sharing. Uh, Mark, what are you hearing from students and how are you helping them cope with these challenges? Yeah, you know, ordinarily the biggest issues we have are anxiety and depression and kind of relational relationship issues. And, and although it's still the case, it's kind of filtered through what are they anxious about right now? You know, what might they be depressed about? And it has a unique flavor. Students are really coping with the online environment and all the things that means. They have concerns about their health the health of their loved ones. Uh, there's just also a lot of uncertainty and vulnerability that they're feeling. And so that kind of weighs on them with a lot of different uh, areas of their life. So they're more constrained and they're trying to figure out how to navigate that. Um, and then of course, there's also a lot of, uh, of cultural conflict and concerns right now and students are bringing that up as well. Hmm. What are those cultural conflicts? Well, there's students uh, who are involved in the racial justice movement, and, and many of our students have an awareness um, and are doing the work of trying to figure out how, uh, how the world and how Binghamton can evolve. And so they are uh, really actively thinking about that and trying to make sense of it from their own identity standpoints. Understood. Uh, Nicole, what about for you? Yeah, so the way that our program works is we have five um, different presentations that people from across campus can request. Um, and two of those presentations, one is stress management and self-care, and another one we're just launching this week. It's called COVID Coping Skills. And those are the only two presentations that we've had requests for this semester um, because students seem to be overly stressed out and having difficulty managing what being a student almost fully remotely means, um, especially in this world of, you know, we don't know what's gonna happen with COVID and things are changing quickly and trying to keep up with it while still maintaining um, a social life to some extent. And for you, Colleen? 
Yeah, to piggyback off of both Mark and Nicole, we are seeing very similar things. Um, there has been a lot of um, increased consultations from parents, faculty members um, with the transition of going remotely um, and with the up to uptick of COVID, um, we are seeing a lot of concerned parents and how to manage isolation and quarantine and things like that. So our office has been providing a lot of support and educational information and outreach to those students at this time. So I think the biggest thing for students as they're watching and for parents to an extent as well is um, where do I go when I'm having situation A? So we've talked, Mark, roommate the roommate is even more emphasized this year because of the isolation restrictions let's say you know things are a little rocky or i'm just adjusting as a freshman to having a roommate uh what's my first plan of action yeah people are seeing a lot of their roommates you know this uh this semester so i think in a way uh Probably students might start with residential life if they're having some uh, conflict with their roommate, just in terms of navigating that. They have some contracting they can do um, to sort things out. But another good stop is probably the, the care team. Um, and Colleen could talk a little bit about that and then maybe jump back to me um, in terms of maybe the more counseling clinical avenue. But if they're just having some, some broader concerns, that care team might also be a good spot. Yeah, so for the care team, really, if a student, a parent, a faculty member isn't really sure where to go, we're a great first stop. Um, we, because we do um, consultations and we support students in a variety of different ways, um, one of the main ways is connecting them with resources and referrals if we can't provide that supportive service. And so, you know, if you're not sure where to go, if you're concerned about a friend, you're concerned about your student, if you're concerned about yourself, you know, and you're not sure how to navigate the university, or you just need someone to talk to and maybe don't think you need therapy ongoing or it's not an imminent risk for you to, you know, seek a, a crisis service, we're really a great first step. And then we will connect you with the appropriate services across campus um, and, and, and make sure that, again, that wraparound um, approach is really um, something we can provide and follow back up once those referrals are provided. And then, so Jacob, if the student is not only having maybe just some conflict with their roommate, but, but they're really distressed by it to where they're not sleeping so well, or the conflict is really getting bigger, or the student, maybe they notice like they're having some conflicts with other people too. It's not just the roommate. That maybe is a point where either residential life or the care team might suggest a counseling referral to kind of talk through some of that with a counselor. And I should also mention in our uh, one of our previous Bear Cat Chat episodes in terms of first steps that residential like MSW intern right. program uh, is a great first step, particularly they're really embedded in um, these environments, even though obviously in a more remote sense this semester, uh, Jess Treadwell does a great job with that. Nicole, when we think of prevention, we think of drug abuse, we think of alcohol abuse. If a student does feel um, that they're at risk or that a friend is in danger, um, how do they go about uh, taking action? Yeah, so our programs are really tailored to um, reach students before they're in that situation so that when they are in the situation or they find themselves um, around someone who is needing help, they know what to do. Um, so you know, anyone can request an MHOPE program. We collaborate with organizations and classes all the time. Um, but we also have our Instagram page and the Health Promotion Prevention Services Facebook page. And we are constantly sharing resources on campus and um, local as well as national resources. Um, so if you're really just, you know, not knowing where to start, it's a great place to look for help. And Mark, let's say, you know, we're coming off of September being um, National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. Um, that doesn't mean that the topic diminishes because we're in October. Um, if someone feels in danger or a friend feels in danger um, and they're just saying, look, I want to, I need to get to someone um, to seek out help, what do they do? How do they do that? Yeah. And so, so the Health Prevention Office does a great job of helping them be aware of some of those signs, but when they see them, then where do they go? Um, so 
it depends a little on how how uh, intense it might be. So if, if somebody's worried about someone to the point where they think like right now they could do something to harm themselves, that's probably a, a contact right to like campus security or a 911 or uh, our community, Binghamton has a mobile team that kind of goes with some uh, with law enforcement to assist. Um, but it's not always the, the case, Jacob, where it's like that, where it, sometimes it's more, I'm worried, or they said something like, mm -hmm. I want to be here. And, and we don't know if that means didn't want to be a Binghamton or didn't want to be here, you know, at all. And so that's really a good place to, uh, for them to contact the counseling center um, to talk to us about uh, what can be done. If it's the student themselves, get them right in. We have urgent appointments every day. If it's a friend or a family member um, to figure out how to get the support or assistance to them, there's a few different ways that can happen. That's a great point, Mark. I'm glad you brought it up. A lot of times the signs are blurry and a lot of times it's sometimes hard to uh, interpret. Let's get to a few other things that uh, I think are certainly on students' minds, and that's the social isolation part, whether you're actually in a quarantine or it's just such a different way of meeting people. Colleen, tell me, where do you think uh, students can cope with those sorts of challenges if they're feeling isolated? Yeah, so I think um, a lot of conversations that the care team is having is that, um, you know, really be involved with, be engaged. The Dean of Students Office webpage also has resources on a lot of virtual opportunities for students. Um, I know Late Night is also having a lot of virtual opportunities for students. And so I think it's just important to remember that, you know, we, um, are living life a little differently right now, but there are supports out there and there are opportunities to connect with one another. So I think that, you know, seeking out, asking questions um, and making sure that you're, you're making a valid effort to try to see what opportunities are on campus because there are some out there. And Nicole, what about for students that are actually in a quarantine? Um, how can they remain engaged in the Binghamton community? Um, Again, all those online engagement resources, I think almost every office on campus right now is promoting something event-wise virtually. Um, but I also think self-care is just extra, extra important right now for students mm -hmm. in quarantine and not in quarantine. Um, you know, practicing meditation or trying yoga or something that you've never done before. Um, what a great opportunity to do that while our outside resources are limited right now. And Colleen, you know, I think of, even though we think 18 to 22 year olds, peak health, you know, there's still by nature what we're getting into the fall when it's normally, hey, I have a sinus infection or geez, you know, the weather's changing can really cause, I would think, some more obsessive thoughts, um, some more catastrophic thoughts in terms of physical health. Have you seen that? And what's the best way to deal with that, especially when uh, all the outside pressures are suggesting be overly cautious, rightfully so. Yeah, so there's definitely, I think, an increase for uh, anxiety and um, worry across no matter what age you are at this point in time in the world that we live in. And so, you know, I do think that people are sometimes hypersensitive and maybe rightfully so around symptoms of physical health um, and increased um, you know, mental health concerns. And so I think that it's important to listen to yourself. I think it's important to uh, practice self-care as Nicole has mentioned. Um, I think that if there's something in your gut telling you that you need to seek support, whether it's physical um, health related or uh, mental health related, um, I think it's important to ask questions, be informed and, and seek the support that you need. Um, and so, yes, we're all hypersensitive to these things, but I think it's rightfully so. And so I think it's really great to just be aware that there's lots of campus resources available to answer these questions that you might have. Hey, Mark, what about people that, um, in talking in vague terms, of course, uh, where family members might be infected with COVID, you know, everything's connected where mm -hmm. that stress, mm -hmm. as in any family member that would be ill with any sort of um, disease, uh, certainly that's hard to be away. And especially with um, students being discouraged from going home before the Thanksgiving break. Yeah, it can be really challenging. Either people afraid or worried, concerned for their loved ones, or 
they're actually experiencing some illness or they're being quarantined at home and the students here and it's better for everyone for safety to, to be a part. Um, so in those circumstances, yeah, I just think it helps to try to stay connected as well as you can through multiple you know, avenues to your, to your family and, um, and take good care of yourself, not jump too far to conclusions, right? To sort of just take it one day at a time, uh, hope everybody is well, make sure they're getting good care, um, and then, you know, just sort of be able to be with that somewhat, you know, and take care of yourself and use your own supports because sometimes we could be worried about others and then not take care of ourselves. So that kind of balance about healthy, good concern for others and also self-care. Colleen, Nicole, what about, I'm sure one of the wonderful elements of the Binghamton community is that parents are involved and invested and um, certainly are engaged. Uh, I imagine you hear from parents as well. Um, it's an anxious time for them. Uh, they are in ways entrusting uh, the university with their with their children. Uh, what's your message to them if they're saying, "Hey, um, I'm concerned. You know, just want to make sure that my my student has places to go to seek help if they need it." Yeah, I think you know, for our office, we are receiving many many parent calls for consultation for a variety of different reasons, and I think that one thing our office has quickly um, tried to make sure all of our department members have kind of this commonly asked question um, mentality. And so as we get information from parents or questions are asked, we are seeking the, the answers from, you know, our community partners on campus and off to be able to provide the most updated information for parents and for students when they when they do make the calls. And so um, I think that, you know, parents just need to be aware that they simply can call us or they can email us. Um, and you know we will we will respond very quickly, um, and we will try to provide the most updated information as possible. Um, and so you know again, I think that uh, parents need to understand that um, they might need to be patient. We're all trying really hard to meet the needs of both the students and families um, at this time. Um, but you know again, we're we're here to support parents as well. And I, I would just piggyback on that by saying that the. Care team is a, is a wonderful place to start and they're so responsive and, and really caring. They live up to their name. Um, and if parents also though think there's a, maybe a mental health component or they're concerned about counseling, that's probably a place where Colleen's office would guide them to us. And we might have a conversation with them about what they can do to support their student or if they're trying to help their student get to counseling, how to make that connection. So that's more where it would start to become a counseling center concern and where we might support a family. I also wanted to mention um, M Hope is participating in Family Weekend and we're running a presentation. Um, we're calling it How to Help Your College Student. So it's a little bit of a combination of a, a few of our presentations, but um, alerting parents to possible warning signs that their student is having um, some mental health difficulties as well as just letting them know of all the resources that we have on campus so that they could possibly say, hey, have you been to the counseling center? You know, that might be a good place to go if, if you're struggling a little bit. Um, and I, that is all virtual. So anyone can access that, I believe. Yes, and excited uh, for that. In our final moments, uh, Mark, what's sort of your, your lasting message to uh, students, uh, parents, um, the community at large? Well, I guess two things come to mind. One is just for people to be aware that, that there are a lot of caring network of support here at the university. Uh, you didn't even mention right, with like psychiatry and we also have um, uh, the SEEK program where students help students. So there's just a lot of resources for students to know and feel that they're cared about. Um, that's one thing that kind of comes to mind. I suppose the other is getting back to what you said about Brought up gratitude and Nicole made some great points. Uh, is that you know for us to not only be focused on the stressors or problems we have, but really the resources we have internally too, like uh, our gratitude, our values. There's some silver linings with with uh, COVID where it shows us what we really care about, you know, and, and what's important to us even while there's some struggles. So I would just encourage students to kind of dig for you know where where there's value and still hope and resilience uh, in addition to the stress. What about you, Colleen? I think 
Mark just said that very eloquently. Um, <laughs> I would agree with him on that. Um, I just also would just like to add that, you know, I think that um, one thing I, I our office is really noticing too that students, um, you know, at this time are are still experiencing typical day-to-day -day stressors related to academics. And so if their well-being and something is happening and they need to take a time out and, you know, our office is the office that also does administrative medical withdrawals, which would be for medical and psychological reasons. And so, you know, for parents and students, if you feel like you need a time out, that's okay. And we are here to help you um, kind of talk that through and understand what that process is like um, and allow yourself that grace and understanding that life is different and it's okay to take a time out. There's no blueprint to what your academic career really needs to look like, you know, and again, take care of yourself um, and, and make choices around um, that self-care and those supports that you have in place. I appreciate you bringing that up, Colleen, because one stress COVID related doesn't diminish the other natural stressors mm -hmm. that would come uh, by being a college student. And understandably, there are many and Mark, one thing I did before we close, want to bring up that strikes me in talking to all three of you is it really seems that you're working collaboratively, that you're not working in silos. And I think something that students sometimes experience, adults experience it. If one avenue doesn't seem like the right fit, oh, right. geez, I have to start from scratch. And that doesn't seem to be the case in the way things are structured here. Yeah, absolutely. We communicate uh, weekly, if not daily, about our, our programs and collaborating and helping students in a number of different ways. And so we each have different maybe specialties or, or niches as hopefully come across, you know, as we've been talking. But also, yes, yeah, sometimes if somebody's not quite getting what they need from one place, they can kind of turn to another and they might be think of a new or a different resource. Just in this conversation, each of us have thought of different ideas. And that you, can, you can help them connect to those different resources. And yeah. obviously you're aware of them. Um, well, terrific insight. Uh, Mark Rice, Colleen Roselle, Nicole Holmes. Thank you so much. Um, and glad that students have your various uh, departments and expertise to lean on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. having us.